Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 73 with Dr. Josh Axe. Some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he takes us through his gut healing protocol and when he explains the different types of guts and how understanding your gut is imperative for healing. I also love that he explains that you can heal your gut in just 90 days and that we must take a holistic mind, body, and soul approach when healing your gut. But there is so much more wisdom, knowledge, and inspiration you get in the full episode. So to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, head to melissarambrosini.com forward slash 73 right now. Josh, it is so great to have you on the show. Can you please tell us how you got to doing the work that you're doing today and writing this amazing book? What really got me into just the natural health space in general is a health crisis in my own family. My mom at 40 years old was diagnosed with cancer. And and that was really surprising for us because we were very uh, fitness oriented. So, you know, my mom looked healthy. She was my gym teacher in elementary school. She was a swim instructor. So we, we thought, hey, she looked good. How could she get this diagnosis? But she did. And she went through all the traditional medical treatments. My mom went and had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. And I can still remember this day, seeing her hair fall out. I remember her looking like she had aged 20 years and two weeks. And you're saying to myself, man, I never want to see anyone have to go through this again. And you know what? She made it through those treatments. And the doctor said, hey, you're cancer-free now and you're healthy. But really, my mom wasn't healthy after the treatments. My mom really actually seemed sicker after she went through chemotherapy. My mom was diagnosed with a thyroid problem, hypothyroidism. She had chronic fatigue syndrome, digestive issues. She got put on antidepressant, anti-anxiety medications. And my mom was sort of sick and tired all the time. And this went on for 10 years. And 10 years later, I was actually training to become a doctor and um, my mom calls me and she said, I've got bad news. I've just been diagnosed with cancer again. What do I do? And I said, Mom, I'll be home. I flew home from Florida back to Ohio where I'm from. And we sat down, prayed together. And we felt really led to take care of her all naturally. And so my mom, rather than the doctors at the time were saying, we want to go in and do surgery and radiation, we decided to change her diet and her lifestyle. So my mom started juicing vegetables every single day. She started doing bone broth. She started doing essential oils like frankincense and myrrh. She started doing supplements like turmeric and reishi mushroom. And she just changed everything. And she went back to the oncologist after four months and redid a CT scan. And they called us a day or two later and they said, "Um, what have you been doing? And we told them and they just said, well, this is highly unusual. We don't typically see this, but your tumors have shrunk by more than half. To me, that was just a, 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 a big part of why I you know, wrote my book, Eat Dirt, as well, because my mom had digestive issues. I had gut issues, and I had to figure out how to heal myself. And a lot of the principles of that are based on uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And looking at the root cause of disease, not, not just treating symptoms, as so often happens in our current system today. Can you explain in basic terms, like what is leaky gut? For someone who has never heard of it, Basically, leaky gut is this. So think of your digestive tract or digestive lining like a net with extremely small holes in it, okay? It basically is there to allow certain things to pass in your bloodstream, smaller things like vitamins and minerals and glucose, but it's meant to keep out bigger particles like, you know, proteins. Well, when somebody gets leaky gut, imagine you've got your, your, this lining and it gets rips in it or holes in it. And part of that is due to inflammation. It essentially causes a fire on your net, starts burning holes in that lining. Well, then what happens is things, those holes get bigger. So things that should never get in your bloodstream start getting in there. Undigested food particles like gluten, bad bacteria, heavy metals, toxins, all those things get into our bloodstream causing inflammation, not just of the gut lining now, but now of the entire body. And if that continues over time, that inflammation can turn into food intolerances. It can turn into immune system issues and actually can even get to the point where your body develops an autoimmune disease and your body starts attacking its own cells and tissues. And so that's, that's the progression. The biggest things that can cause leaky gut 
our emotional stress can open up. They're called gap junctions. Those can cause bigger holes in your gut lining, toxins. Again, the food particles like gluten and casein. Medications actually are very damaging to our system, especially antibiotics pathogens like parasites, and then just organ malfunction in general, all of those things can contribute to leaky gut. What are some of the common symptoms that people might have? Leaky gut, sometimes it's related to digestive issues, but people can have leaky gut and not have any digestive issues. Now, some of them are digestive related, like gas and bloating. Bloating is a big sign. Somebody has leaky gut, uh, so is candida. So that would be very high up on the list. If somebody has bloating or candida, but also if somebody has food sensitivities, if somebody has an autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, chronic fatigue, joint pain, headaches, skin issues like rosacea and acne are always leaky gut related and to some degree. Of course, digestive problems. But I would say those are some of the biggest ones. Actually, anxiety and depression would be up there too. Hippocrates said this over 2,000 years ago. He said, all disease begins in the gut. Let's say you have leaky gut and now your body's gluten intolerant. You eat some gluten, it gets into the bloodstream, then and actually start causing inflammation of the thyroid. Over time, then your body can start attacking its own thyroid, causing Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, most doctors today would give somebody maybe a drug like Synthroid to change thyroid markers and maybe an immunodepressant. But if we're going to treat the root cause of, hey, what actually caused this autoimmune disease or this thyroid problem, we've got to go back and start healing and sealing up the gut lining. You know, in traditional Chinese medicine, they often call it dampness. Your body is damp, is a part of what can call leaky gut. So we've got to dry that up. And so a diet in order to do that is very, it's warming, it's easy to digest, and it's full of foods that dry up dampness and help heal the gut lining. Number one food, um, which we'll get to in a minute, will be broth. But again, the foods you got to remove are foods that cause inflammation and dampness. So those inflammatory foods, it's going to be gluten. Uh, Most dairy products are very dampening and can cause inflammation. Refined grains. I mean, grains for the most part are not the best, but especially if they were refined grains are going to be high on that list. Hydrogenated oils, even You know, there's a lot of GMO foods out there like GMO canola oil isn't the best, artificial sweeteners. So we've got to get all of those out of our diet. So number one is remove. Let's go talk about what to add in here. In terms of the best foods to eat, you know, I would say bone broth is my number one food. That's high up on the list. After that, I would say cooked vegetables are going to be very good. Um, Cooked vegetables, see, the, the ideal meal for somebody with leaky gut is a big bowl of soup, not with grains, not with noodles, but like a big bowl of chicken vegetable soup or beef and vegetable soup. That's the ideal meal because you've got bone broth, which contains amino acids that help heal the gut. Very easy to digest. You've got lots of vegetables there. So again, that's ideal there. And then after that, certain fruit can be okay. Pears are one of my favorite fruits. Pears with a little bit of like cinnamon or pumpkin spice on them are very easy to digest. So those would be high up on the list along with things like blueberries. So you got a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of fruit there. Organic meat, you know, whether it's wild caught salmon, grass fed beef, organic chicken and turkey, but I'd say organic wild meats would also be up there. And really this should form the basis of the diet is broth, vegetables, some fruit in moderation, just one to two servings a day and organic meat. And if somebody is going to consume a grain, Just about the only grain I recommend is a sprouted rice that's cooked in the crock pot as a congee, which basically means you just turn rice into mush because you cook it a long time. So sprouted rice is the one grain I think some people tolerate well. Again, only sprouted and long cooked. One of the things I have people do to lower cortisol is start taking more walks, You know, going out in nature and just walking trails, doing those types of things to lower cortisol and allow your gut to heal. Taking a healing bath at night, I'd have patients put in one cup of Epsom salts, 20 drops of lavender oil, and just soak in a tub three times a week. And then scheduling things in the week that people love to do, things that are stress relievers. But I think there's a lot of value there as well as people restoring their emotional health, their mental health. I find a lot of people with leaky gut have high levels of either worry or fear or anxiety. We know if you look at traditional Chinese medicine, Different emotions cause disease to build in certain organs. For instance, the emotion of worry, and we know this 
based on just just think about this. If somebody is studying for a test or somebody's really worrying about something, it can cause them to have an upset stomach. So the emotion of worry causes dysfunction of your stomach, your spleen, and your pancreas. If somebody has a lot of fear, think about this. If a child gets very scared, they can actually wet themselves. They they lose control of their bladder. Now, if somebody has, let's say you have a, a person who has fear of disappointing their parents, fear of disappointing others or their spouse, or fear of something, you know, something not working out in life, if they live with that fear their whole life, that's going to cause disease in their reproductive organs, specifically the kidneys, the adrenals. Uh, so think about this. You get really afraid, like a bear is chasing you. What does that affect? Your adrenals, your kidneys, where those stress hormones are released. If somebody has grief in their life, they lost a loved one or go through a divorce or feel a sense of loss, that causes disease in the lungs and the colon. So we know that emotions based on thousands of years of, you know, the Chinese knew this, that via Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine knew this, biblical medicine knew this, that if you are sick, if you're emotionally, you're emotionally sick, it's going to cause disease in your body. The truth is there are multiple causes of leaky gut in these issues. And so I broke it down. People have different types. So the candida gut type is based off of what's called the earth element in Chinese medicine and people that have excess dampness in their body. Again, think about what dampness is. Dampness is if you go into a a, a wet basement, what can start to happen there? Well, a wet basement starts to get mold growing, fungus, parasites, essentially yeast, overgrowth, mold overgrowth in that area. What we say is candida in Western medicine is dampness in Chinese medicine. And so how do you treat dampness? Well, you get rid of foods that increase mucus in the body. And those foods include anything with you know high sugary foods tend to be very high on that list. Wheat products, egg whites are very uh, dampening. Bananas are dampening. Dairy is dampening. So again, getting rid of those foods and then consuming foods that dry up dampness and kill candida are going to be foods uh, that are very nourishing to the spleen and typically orange. So pumpkin is a great food for that. You know, most vegetables are great, but especially bitter foods are the best foods for drying up dampness. So we're also talking about things like broccoli, rabe, and uh, artichokes and arugula. You know, these are bitter foods. So you want to do foods that are are orange in color. You want to do some bitter foods and uh, you want to do warming foods like bone broth. So that's ideal for that candida gut type. The emotion those people are most apt to have is going to be the emotion of worries. The herbs that are best for a candida or candida gut type are going to be herbs that are drying like paldarco, oregano, cinnamon, uh, and then also herbs that support and nourish the spleen like astragalus. So those are all great for that gut type. Um, for, for the candida gut type. Okay. And then what about the stress gut type? Yeah. Stress gut is related to the water element in Chinese medicine. And those people are most apt to have the emotion of fear, fear of failure, fear of disappointing others. Water elements are related to the, uh, reproductive organs, the kidneys and the adrenal gland. So really it's doing things to really support the adrenals. If somebody has major adrenal fatigue or what somebody would call a chi deficiency, in Chinese medicine, we need to strengthen that primarily with reducing emotional stress, with diet and adaptogenic herbs. The diet that it's most therapeutic for those organs is going to be foods that are sort of very dark in color, like dark, deep blues. Blueberries are great. Raspberries are great. Um, also, chia seeds, black rice. So really nourish the, that type. And then adaptogenic herbs that nourish the adrenals and kidneys, such as a reishi mushroom. Rhodiola rosea, holy basil, ashwagandha, all of those are really going to help nourish that type. Okay. And then what about the immune gut? Yeah. Immune gut is related to, uh, again, this is especially important for people with autoimmune disease and people with the most severe sensitivities or inflammatory bowel disease and autoimmune disease oftentimes start on this plan. This is known as the metal element in Chinese medicine. And if somebody's experiencing the emotion of grief or loss, that would also affect them emotionally. So they'll need to really work on building joy in their life. The other thing about this type is the food type is, and there's a flavor related to this type, and it's pungent foods. So people do very well with things like horseradish or uh, raw cheeses can be nourishing to those people. Um, well, so, you know, Things that, again, are pungent in flavor are very good for them. And foods that are, are white color or a light yellow nourish, nourish the immune system. So ginger, 
uh, is very good. Again, that's very pungent, of course. Chicken broth, cauliflower. So white and and uh, by the way, all colors relate to a type. So I mentioned this earlier, this earth element or candida needs orange foods, especially things like pumpkin are nourishing. If we're looking at and then beef, it's that sort of reddish color to it, and that's good for the heart as well. And then as we're talking about, again, stress gut type, they need those dark colors, especially dark blues and purples and dark greens like kale are very good for them as well. But again, the metal element or that immune gut, best immune foods are going to be those foods that, that are light yellow. If people follow what we've talked about today, or if somebody wants a more concrete plan, they can get it in my book, Eat Dirt, and I go through everything in there for each type and that type of thing. But yeah, if somebody follows a plan, most of the time in 90 days, now I will say this, some people can do it in 30 days. Some people can take, you know, closer to, let's say if somebody has severe inflammatory bowel disease and candida, you know, they, 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 they may take 12 months, but in general, a lot of people, even with major issues and l- listen, even though the person might take nine months total, if they're super severe to completely recover, they will still see big, big results in 90 days. In fact, most people I think will see big results in just 30 days. 